watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. We're gonna, Anthony, will you help me with this? So we're gonna put this can of black eyed peas, you see them right there at the bottom, we're gonna put them right there and I'll put these. And, and which character does change? Which one develops? School would be built for Germantown High School so that the students that currently attend Germantown High School will have an equal or better facility and can receive their education. Welcome to a new edition of Memphis Shelby County Schools Report. We're coming to you from the studios of Germantown High School Television. I'm Mary Davenport. And I'm Priscilla Daniels. Each month we highlight various people, programs, and events making a difference in our school system. On our show today, MSCS is helping to keep students and their families nourished with a new community grocery store. And parents will want to stay tuned for today's MSCS Focus. Executive producer Allison Long is joined by Memphis Shelby County Schools Chief Strategic Planning and Operations Advisor Patrice Thomas. They will discuss 21st century classrooms and the new school being built north of Shelby Farms. But first, an MSES principal is in the running for Tennessee Principal of the Year. Renee Meeks has been all hands on deck since she took over at Sea Isle Elementary. Her leadership has inspired her staff to be better and do better. Dr. Meeks. <laughs> Dr. Meeks. Love it. Who is Principal Meeks? That, that's very interesting. Dr. Meeks is definitely high up on the list of people that I wanted to work for. So we are going to have a faculty meeting today, but it's only going to be for grade chief. She is conscientious about decisions, extremely sensitive to the needs, whether it's parents or teachers, our children. She's like one of the wonderful teachers principals I ever had. Good morning Seahawks. We are so ready to have a magnificent Monday on the island. We're blessed to have a principal that has a heart that she has. I would say that Principal Meeks is someone who cares a lot about students, cares a lot about family, cares a lot about community, and feels that education is important, safety is important, and it's important to have fun at school. She's like very cool. She doesn't want us to be bored. When you're like feeling sad, she makes you feel so better, happy. I would say Dr. Meek stands out from the other principals um, in being recognized as principal of the year um, because of her consistent hard work. To work in an elementary school, you must have compassion. And then you must have a, a strong pedagogy of teaching. Uh, what does classroom management look like? What do we do to set those routines and procedures in the school so that it's not so stringent that the students don't enjoy learning and they want to come back the next day? She gets us to do some nice things like clubs. So they have to do holiday club, holiday club, book club, robotics, and she cares about us. She cares about us a lot because she let us actually do fun things while we're doing it. She's focused on the work, and not on um, accolades. She's not focused on the recognition. She's focused on making sure that Sea Isle is the best place for our students and our families. Sea Isle Elementary is a very, very special place. Coming into this building, I just feel like I'm at home. Uh, because we have so many wonderful components to our building. We have a deaf and hard of hearing program for students. Dr. Meeks. Dr. Meeks. We have a program for vision limited and blind students, and we're the only elementary school with that type of program. What is A times six? We have gifted students. We have students who need additional support. We have the whole gamut of students. Dr. Meeks uh, is hands-on. She wears tennis shoes most of the time. She's fashionable, but if you go down to the bottom, there are tennis shoes because there's a lot of walking involved. Every day when students are coming up, good morning, Dr. Meeks, how are you, Dr. Meeks? I did this this weekend, it makes a big difference. So, well, welcome. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you. So I would say Dr. Meeks as the principal is loving and kind, but have high expectations. It's true, it really is. <laughs> I know it might be hard for somebody outside of the profession to believe, but it is true. What's the plan for PLC for? Well, we have to go she leads here. with her heart, okay. so um, but PLC she leads in a way that she holds people accountable, um, makes everyone responsible, but at the same time, she wants to make sure that everybody has what they need in order to meet expectations. She's always willing to be a learner, and that's one of the things that I think a great teacher and leader has to have in their background as well. One of the highlights of my day is actually going into the classroom to uh, observe instructional practices and sometimes I get so lost in those classrooms I'm in there longer than I planned because I see such great teaching and the students are so engaged in the learning uh, it makes me think back to when I was a teacher uh, but they the teachers here do such a phenomenal job but I do miss being in the classroom sometimes <laughs> The finalists for Principal of the Year are Dr. Renee Meeks, CIL Elementary. We were elated that Dr. Meeks was uh, nominated Principal of the Year because we know she deserves it. We know the jewel that we have here, but to be recognized on a grand stage, it enlightened us as well, but her being who she is, she said, I couldn't have done it without you all. I'm honored to be part of the staff with her, but I think that's an honor that she can, she can keep on her own. She really can. To be chosen to represent the, my colleagues as Principal of the Year is so exciting and such a humbling experience because I know how hard principals work. She probably became Principal of the Year because she does a lot of stuff for her students and she cares a lot about her students. She's everything CIL needs um, and that these children deserve. A food desert is defined as an area with limited access to affordable and nutritious food. And unfortunately, there are a few of these left in Shelby County. But there is hope for MSCS families struggling to put food on the table. The school district hopes to end student food insecurity starting with a cashless grocery store inside Treadwell International Community School. We went to get a look inside. My name is Jasmine Crow. I'm the founder and CEO of Gooder. Gooder is a sustainable food waste management company and we kind of live off of the premise that so much food goes to waste while so many people go hungry and so we believe that hunger is not an issue of scarcity but rather a matter of logistics. So we really have these really big problems that we believe can solve each other. When we do surveys, it was always food at the top of the list. A lot of times you see uniforms at the top of the list or you may see shoes or any other things, but food was just so high here at Cherbourg Middle and we noticed that that was actually affecting the kids' work at school. Me and Janae, uh, we have a great uh, relationship and I was sharing with her about our, we was in a food desert and the need that we needed for our families. And so when me and her in some dialogue, it just came about, she was like, hey, Mr. Hill, what do you think about this? And I was like, you know what, Janae? That is something that we actually need. And so as we kind of put our heads together and then the good store floors for us. And so it was a blessing to be in partnership with her and our so family and engagement come, department because this, this opportunity that we was presented with, it is something that our families are so grateful for. El programa para mí so for me, it's very, very important because this program helped me to feed my kids because till now I still have not been able to find a job. And so we were, were like, okay, we've got to do what we can for these families so that they can have the food. And a lot of the times when kids come to school hungry, they're not able to learn because their focus is, I'm hungry. Um, and so we have this pantry here that will allow people in our community to come and get food for free. Um, and not only people in our community, but also the seven surrounding schools. Those families can also sign up to come and get food. Well, your eggs. <laughs> we, we don't want any family to have to worry about a cost when it comes down to this need. Our goal is to make sure that our children have the nourishment to their body so they can be a productive scholar when they come into the school. I'm doing fine, but you know, it's nice too because like if I'm ever struggling, I know I can come here and I can talk to somebody here and they can help me out. We um, kind of try to go off the um, 
the population of our families in this community. So this is a, a heavily Hispanic and African and Arabic population. We try to at least get something that they can at least make a meal with, whether it's kosher food, whether it's non-dairy foods, or if it's a lot of taco seasoning, um, whatever we feel that is best for the families, because we don't want to get food that no one will eat, because it'll just sit on the shelves. When it comes down, we're looking at a full-fledged grocery store, we're looking at all the essential items inside of a grocery store, not only just the food. So you're talking about um, the oil to cook with. You're talking about the soap to wash your dishes with. So we want to make sure we provide all of those necessities to make sure our families have everything they need. For your dishes. Okay. And this That's for nice. soap for your body. Smell good. And we also have a full-fledged washer and dryer so when they don't have a place to go wash their clothes, they're able to come in and schedule time to wash their clothes as well. And we also um, have students that we um, use to help stock and to help organize the pantry as well as our um, hygiene closets in the inside. Um, and we also allow them, once they're done helping us, we allow the kids to pack a bag. Hey, what are some things that your parents would want? What are you needing right now? Do you need eggs? Do you need milk? Do you need bread? What are some snacks that you like? Like you can grab that and put it in a bag and take it home with you at the end of the day. I feel like it's beneficial for the students because like let's say if their mom doesn't get paid and they need food, they can just contact the school to say like if they didn't, they need food or something. So once you fix those barrier issues at home, like I don't have any food or hey, you know, I need money to um, pay the light bill, you fix those problems at home and then it carries on to the school. One of the greatest things they have seen for us um, as a community and as a school, our attendance um, has grew. So that means we have a lot more of our scholars coming to school. And then from an academic standpoint, we actually just took our first Mastery Connect assessment. And so we're actually digging deep into that data, but we have seen some strengths and some growth from last year's Mastery Connect data. And this is important for their growth, for their professional growth. I think it's amazing because our scholars and their families are impacted and touched in a way um, that some may not understand. This is amazing. I just, that, that really inspires me too, so I want to help other people. We want to see it continue to grow. We want to see more stores and more schools to help end hunger in Memphis Shepherd County Schools. Any family um, that's in need, that needs a service provided, um, please feel free at any moment in time to contact Trevor National Community School, Elementary or Middle Side, because we're here for you. Um, any partners that would like to come over, take a look, and to just to be a part of this transformation that we're trying to provide to our communities, we would love for you to come in, provide assistance, and just to be a part of this family atmosphere. Now, here's GHS TV executive producer Allison Long with this month's MSCS Focus. In the last year, Memphis Shelby County Schools has announced the construction of not one, but two new high schools. One is the long talked of new high school in Fraser. The other will replace Germantown High School, where we are today. These will be the first new high schools for the district in a decade and will showcase 21st century technology and design. Here to discuss all of this is Patrice Thomas, Chief Strategic Planning and Operations Officer, or advisor, I should say. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So Memphis Shelby County Schools is one of the largest school districts in the nation and has over 200 schools, is that correct? That 200? is correct. Okay. And correct. so with that comes a lot of um, preventative maintenance and repair on school buildings, and a lot of these school buildings are antiquated. So can you first tell us what the plan is for these schools to keep them in, in operation for our students? Great. So, of course, um, as you know, uh, Memphis Shepherd County Schools District is not a revenue generating body. Most of the funding that we receive for maintenance and repairs actually is funded by the Shelby County government. And, of course, with any public body, um, oftentimes the needs are greater than, of course, the, uh, the resources available. So we have, we are very thankful to them for the resources we have received. But what we know is nationally, the amount that we should receive per square foot for uh, maintenance and repairs has been significantly less than what we need. And so what you'll likely hear in the next weeks and months is an infrastructure plan that the superintendent will be rolling out and sharing publicly. Okay, so let's get to the exciting portion, the fact that two new high schools are being built. Can you tell us about these two schools and where they're located? 
So absolutely. So the two new high schools that are coming online, and we're super excited about that, is the, will be, of course, replacing Germantown High School, which will be located in the Cordova area, right off Germantown Parkway in Fisher Steel. And then, of course, the second school that will be built is in the Fraser community, and that particular school is going to be on Dalewood, which is the current location for MLK Prep as you're planning for these schools, and I don't know if the two are comparable or if they're, uh, they have any differences, but what are some things that are going into the planning of these schools and things you want to make sure that you include for the students and the teachers when they move over to these At new locations? Absolutely. So we are actually moving pretty quickly with a lot of the architecture, engineering, design work. And so as you know that there's been several conversations with various stakeholders, including students, parents, faculty, and staff of both of the schools to ensure we understand what the programming they value most and also research in terms of what are some of the best practices that are nationwide that are being built into new state-of-the-art schools and we're making sure that those items are built into the two new schools. And what are the projected opening dates for the Fraser School and the New Germantown High School. So right now both are tracking to have a school opening date of fall of 2027. We are hopeful that the building would substantially be done by fall of 2026, but certainly um, anticipate that the students will be in the school by fall of 2027 or before. So for our viewers who have heard about Lucy Elementary and the three G's, Germantown Elementary, Germantown Middle, and Germantown High School. What is the legislation and what is the reason for moving locations of the schools or closing them or whatever the case may be? Great. So yes, actually there was a state legislation a couple of years ago that ultimately indicated that Memphis Shelby County School District could not operate within the city of Germantown or Millington because those had their own separate LEAs. And through an agreement that was a three-party agreement between the city of Germantown, Memphis Shelby County government, and Memphis Shelby County School District, it was agreed that a new school would be built for Germantown High School so that the students that currently attend Germantown High School will have an equal or better facility in which they can receive their education. Great. So as you are, are part of um, working on state-of-the-art schools and building new schools in the district, are there future schools that will be built for the students of Memphis Shelby County Schools? We so certainly hope so. Of course, right now there are 33 schools that are over 70 years old within the Memphis City School District's portfolio. So what you'll hear uh, in the coming weeks and months from the superintendent is an infrastructure plan where she's uh, recommending what some of those changes may look like in terms of school facilities. Great. And what are some other things on the horizon that you're working on that, that our viewers may find interesting about Memphis Shelby County Schools? So right now, I am all things new schools, and so of course, um, we are holding meetings uh, every single week with our design team to ensure that we can complete these schools on time so that we can um, transition our students into better facilities as soon as possible. I do want to go back uh, when you were talking about the the new high schools and making sure that they had the things that they stu the students need. And we are going into 21st century state of the art technology. We want to make sure that all things, as fast as they're changing, are still um, good for our students. What are some things that you're making sure to include in the new high schools? Absolutely, is to first of all making sure that we not only have an equal but better. Uh, so an example is the TV station. I think one of our non-negotiables is that um, this particular station where we're we're recording right now that it actually is not only included in the new school but it actually has most of the cutting edge technology that it needs to be able to improve upon it and make it even better uh, even more of an Emmy award winning program more so than it's been in the past. Great. Well as an alumni of Germantown High School I'm sad to to see 
this school no longer exists, but as a teacher within Shelby County School, Memphis Shelby County Schools, um, a longtime teacher, I am excited about what the future holds with Memphis Shelby County Schools, and I know our faculty, staff, and students look forward to our new location. Absolutely, and I think one of the key to that is um, we've got it for the design team to ensure that built into the new school that alumni can feel that same connection. So what you should see in the new school is a lot of artifacts and a lot of um, information and um, aesthetics that may be reminiscent of the, the old Germantown High School. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. There are more than 12,000 English language learners in the school district. As our population grows, so does the number of students in English as a second language courses. The ESL department provides educational opportunities specific to the needs of these students so they can succeed academically. We visited a high school program that is seeing a lot of success in the classroom. I'm from Yemen, but I live here for nine years. I come from Venezuela. My name is Mario. I'm from Mexico, you know. The subject is the main who or what. It is that noun. Language learning doesn't happen overnight. It was kind of difficult for me because the only, the only language I know was Spanish. We speak Arabic, so Arabic, like the language is like have a lot of words. So it was like hard for me to say like, like switch my language to English. What is it called? Uh, like the shingles? It was kind of hard. It was, no, it wasn't kind of. It was very, very hard. You have to have a lot of patience. You have to have a lot of acceptance. It's not just the language. It's not a linguistic part. The culture is an important way to understand, and that's an important thing for me and for my students. You're meeting students from all over the world. You're meeting students who may have values, belief systems that are very different from yours, and you have to make them feel um, accepted and that you care about them even when their belief systems may be incongruent with yours. When I first got here, like in school, I didn't, I wasn't in the program for like two months. But when I got into the program, my teacher at that time, she was the best. She helped me a lot and that's how I got to learn English really, really fast. Paula, we're going to start with you. What genre did you pick? I picked fiction. Why? Um, because in the background they said, the, the ESL program in Shelby County serves about 12,000 students. The program has grown exponentially since I started 10 years ago. Um, at Germantown High School, we have 43 uh, English learners taking seven classes a day. It's a big caseload. Each of my students goes to a different cultural experience when coming here. ESL has helped to customize their experience. My students go through, some go through cultural shock. They face stereotypes, they face stigmas. It's not just a linguistic. Without having an ESL program that understands challenges that they go through, you know, yeah, they can learn RBC. They can actually watch YouTubes nowadays and just learn all the, the language part of it. If I search on YouTube, they're gonna give me the answer, but I didn't like get it. But if I go to my teacher, I'll be like, hey, can you explain this for me? Why do we need to cover the machine? Anybody? Yes. The water? Water. And that way, water will come down. <clears throat> they will explain it for me, and they can give me like the result, and that I understand better. So yeah, it's really actually helped me a lot. So if you look at the second question, so the question says, do you think Barack Obama, right, he was the president of the United States. So like he's getting this really, it becomes harder to learn a language the older that you get. The cutoff is somewhere between seven to 10 years old. You know, as soon as you reach about 10 years old, it becomes significantly more challenging to learn a language. Sometimes I feel kind of embarrassed of my accent. Um, I feel like it's very, very much noticeable. It's a dialogue. It's a dialogue, and what's dialogue? I talk between two persons. But I don't let that stop me because I know if I think a lot about that, I'm just gonna get like really sad. So I just like talk and talk and talk and talk. So I try to target that language first, that like survival English. Is committee singular or plural? Of course, they are having to spend so much of their life in an academic setting. So the way it's facing isn't necessarily the important part yet. We'll get to that next. Now we have to move beyond 
greetings and introductions. We also have static in literature into how do you be successful in biology? How are we successful in geometry? Really getting into that academic language and that can take up to seven years. But if I get someone who's you know, 16 years old, we have a lot of work that we have to accomplish in like a very short amount of time. Essa? Oh, I think it's open to the not with math, to be honest, as long as they try. I've had, but let's say, for example, four students spoke no English. The ones, the two who paid attention and tried, they did fine. The two who just gave up because they said that they don't know the language, they refused to try, they use it as a, as a barrier, they use it as an excuse, they, they failed. And those students are the ones who's enthusiastic about learning, wanting to be in America, wanting to adjust, yes. But also there are the students who won the lottery and came here and because they're family and they don't want to be here. And I understand that. I understand you don't want to be in, in the U.S., you want to be with your friends. The thing is, these students have knowledge. They have something in there, right? We just have to figure out the best way for them to have access to that in English and for them to be able to express themselves. So how effective is it? As long as you have, I think, a smaller group of students, like I said, we have 43 here, the smaller the classroom size is, the more effective it will be because you need to have a lot of that one-on-one -on -one time with that student, that direct um, interaction with that student. So now, how do we start the second sentence? Good. According to the text, and now, all these annotations we have, you're going to find one quote, something in the text that tells us, how did you know she wants to be rich? I'm grateful for the you know, for the ESO program, teaching me English. Oh my God, I'm super grateful for that. I'm super thankful for my teachers, um, for all the people that helped me to get to learn English for the ESL program. I'm like extremely helpful, grateful for that. We hope you enjoyed this month's Memphis Shelby County Schools report. If you would like to learn more about Memphis Shelby County Schools, visit us on the web at seSk12.org. On behalf of everyone here at Germantown High School Television and Memphis Shelby County Schools, thank you for watching today's program. We'll see you next time on Memphis Shelby County Schools Report.